Because uh, we have these lovely discussions all the time about it. 
Busters. Uh, we're talking about animal guides. There's so many. It just goes on and on. It just depends on, it just depends on um, the lineage or the tradition. So, in this dreaming state, you are going to be connecting with your energetic helpers. Now, I'm not going to say who your energetic helper is. It's different for all of us, but you all love this prayer. And I just go through my energetic helpers, and it really is to open up an opportunity for you to connect with yours. Sometimes it's ancestors. Um, sometimes it's uh, uh, things that you have been. Sometimes it's other things. Just really connecting in there and holding a space. So let's start with some Reiki symbols. Surround your energy. And just take three deep breaths here. Inhale. sense. 
it's at. And if it's here, that's where it's at. It doesn't matter if it was just only 24 hours. They will make the best out of each moment and be okay. Make peace with the fact that it's like, shoo, 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 shoo. Virgo energy be like, figure that out, friend. <laughs> and there's something to learn with every little piece of that where it's long term. You want Virgo energy. Everyone, for the sake of their mental, emotional health,
from just traveling where the universe takes me. It is more about your receiving information for reflection. So Jupiter in Pisces in retrograde, there's going to be some deep-seated traumas that come up that are more, most likely unconscious. Or let's not even use the word trauma. I'm going to say issues that arise that need to be resolved. And when Jupiter and Pisces comes back around December 28th, and it's going to be direct, it's going to be a different energy. So what you do now, doing the work now matters because that is when it's going to come back. So don't shy away from the work. So usually what happens when there are things that are uncomfortable that happen to us or, you know, just um, that have happened when they resurface and they come back, you have two choices to process and learn your best way of like flowing through it and getting through it or to sink back into old habits and old behaviors and it's one of two ways you can look around and see within yourself and other people what they're doing so it might be a, like scary to have to process things that you're like ugh but it is the best thing for you and just to trust that the universe will always have your back you're not being punished for anything all it is is just an opportunity for self-reflection and growth because when it hits direct, it's going to amplify what you have learned and what you are learning now. You will be able to help others. That's why you're going through it. So don't think about it in the perspective of it is a negative or it's just like, uh, you know, like a roadblock. Think of it as, okay, I'm going to pay attention to what's going on so that later on I can help others who are going through something similar. Now, Jupiter in Aquarius vibes are a bit different. Whereas Pisces is all about the, the trusting in the universe. It is the belief. Pisces is everything about belief. So just trusting in God, you know, taking you, universe taking you where you need to go or receiving the messages you need. Aquarius energy is all about your social networks. It's not hierarchical, meaning like uh, you're the parent or who is the boss, stuff like that. That is Capricorn energy. It is your uh, web of people. So when Jupiter, which is expansive, goes into Aquarius, which it's going to spend most of its retrograde doing that, what's going to happen is that you are going to be, your social network is almost going to wrap a blanket around you and you're going to receive the information that you need for your ultimate development and growth there. So that might even make you consider what is your impact in the world or, you know, to sit and reflect on who you actually want to be in your life and all of those things. Like who, when I say who you want to actually be in your life, I mean, what people do you want to actually share this life with in this space? Because those who are not so healthy, they will disperse during that time or there will be a dissonance and those who are, they will come and wrap around you. But that is Jupiter in Aquarius in retrograde. Jupiter in Aquarius direct means you will expand your social network. More people, more connections and things like that. So let me run it back a little bit. If Jupiter is in Aquarius in retrograde, you're receiving the information you need from your network. It doesn't matter if it, if it expands or not because it's internal. It's not external yet. It doesn't matter. But July 28th and on, that is when uh, Jupiter in Pisces, that is when Jupiter will go into Aquarius and that energy all the way until October 18th will be that internal direct. You're going to receive what you need when it comes to ultimately what is your growth, what makes you a better person, what is your, your self-development. It could even, you know, it's the planet of career too, of, of career expansion and things like that. So you're going to get all that self-development you need from that July 28th to October 18th. So all of that is going to happen during that time. But as soon as that October 18th, of course, there's always transitional periods, but when October 18th is released and you will be or have, or we will all have Jupiter in Aquarius direct, then that's if you did the work, that is when your network significantly expands and, and just blows up. If you did not do the work, that 
was in the sky when they were born and it makes up their personality or how they might feel towards things. So with your specific information, your Jupiter was in a sign when you were born. Based off of the time you were born, your Jupiter was in a certain house. So if you know your rising sign, also known as your ascendant, also known as your first house, then you will know your houses. If you don't know your rising sign, you don't know what time you were born. It's okay, don't worry about the house stuff. But if you do, this is really important because it tells you what part of your life Jupiter will impact the most, okay? So, for example, if you have Jupiter, if you were born with Jupiter uh, in Cancer, that might mean that you have a big family or you might want a big family or you feel really comfortable in a, in a big family. If you have Jupiter in Capricorn, you might feel really comfortable in large businesses, large institutions or want to be building or find your greatest luck in those areas. For me, my Jupiter is in Leo, so I really enjoy uh, uh, kind of taking the lead on a lot of stuff or, or liking to... Um, uh, uh, expand the things that I'm interested in or if there's something I like I just like jump in it and go for it kind of thing um, and it just depends on you so you have to compare your relationship of who you are naturally versus what's coming up so for example when I just gave myself saying that I my Jupiter is naturally in Leo and Jupiter versus Pisces energy naturally I'm a very reflective person but if I wasn't this probably would be much more difficult and the reason why is because when Leo and Jupiter wants to take an action they want to go and go after it when Jupiter in Pisces wants to take an action they will let go and allow the universe to flow so if I was trying to you know like just force my way into it I would not be learning the lessons that I need to learn so it still comes up and I'm like oh I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that but it's like and eh, you know take the time off and just allow it to flow that's actually a part of the reason why I've been taking so much time off because I was like look you know just allow it to flow <laughs> just allow that thing to flow the second thing is your houses okay what we were just talking about what house it's in your first your first house is uh, takes on Aries qualities second Taurus qualities third Gemini qualities in all the way around, even though the houses themselves are in signs. For example, uh, your seventh house, which represents partnerships, represents marriage. You know, that is the natural qualities of Libra, even though it will be in another sign. So, for example, if your seventh house is in Cancer, that means you might, um, it means your rising sign because your seventh house is your descendant, your first house is your ascendant. So, that means your rising sign is Capricorn, the astrological opposite of Capricorn is cancer that means you are probably a go go getter you're very assertive you're all this and so when you look at a partnership you're looking for someone who's maybe a little bit more compassionate a little bit more nurturing a little bit more kind of go with the flow kind of energy um to balance out so if jupiter was in your seventh house that means a lot of this work or these themes would be in that area but if it's in your seventh house it's not in your sixth house meaning you maybe work is not a problem like maybe uh, or your third house which has to do with your everyday routines so maybe your routines and stuff are off so that's why that's why i love astrology because it really like helps to explain a lot of what is going on here so that's you gotta go out there you can use free online natal charts to just do some comparing now here are the important dates to remember okay jupiter went into Pisces on May 13th and will continue to July 28th, okay? July 28th to December 28th, it will be in Aquarius, okay? And then December 28th till majority of 2022, it will jump back into Pisces. Now, within that happening, okay, here, there, here, there, within that happening, Jupiter itself went into retrograde and will be retrograde in both signs. It started off retrograde.
this moment to just go in and check on the energy. As a energy healing practitioner, I use various modalities as just a naturally curious person and a person who really enjoys learning about mysticism. I'm constantly learning about, you know, different areas and interests and stuff like that. So I don't necessarily feel that I need to stick to Reiki. Uh, Reiki is just one of many modalities and Reiki is a relatively new type of energy healing. And so there's just so much out there that we can use in um, the moment. And when I train others, I train them with that mentality. I give you a foundation in Reiki, but I expect you to go on and continue to learn and expand because if you're only going to do Reiki for the rest of your life, you will be limiting yourself from learning so much of life. There's so much to learn, okay? And all of that. So, in the moment, just bringing that energy down and through, okay? Down and through. And I'm excited, y'all. We are nearing our 500th video. I'm like, holy shit, when the fuck did that happen? <laughs> Jupiter to get 
is for you, okay? Only you can do that. You can change your luck. You can change your path. You can change anything that you want if you decide to do it, and that's the most empowering thing of all. Well, family, I really enjoyed this moment, and I enjoyed sharing this space with you. Um, I just want to say to you, thank you, coming on uh, video 500. Wow. This community has changed my life, and I appreciate hearing all of those who, you know, it has changed their life too, but just know that it has changed my life for the better. It has been one of the most empowering things that I have ever embarked on, and it is one of the most fulfilling things I've ever done. The sweetness of you, the kindness of you, the showing up for yourself. You know, because at the end of the day, as an energy healing practitioner, I can have a session with you and I can work to help you in the session, but you have to be with you every day. Before I was an energy healing practitioner, I was a person on a journey. I'm still a person on a journey. And it required me going in and working on myself each and every day to the point where I started to collect all of this information. It's like, I guess it's time to help others. But at the bare minimum, you show up, you do the work. And I think that's pretty amazing. So never forget how amazing you are for that. Okay. Let your ashe be peace, power, and all that good stuff. Now, as I've said before, I don't believe in reliving trauma by allowing yourself to just energetically take the trash out. That's all it is, you know. When you know you need to take your trash out, you don't open up the trash bag and make sure everything in there is supposed to be in there. No, it's already in the trash. <laughs> Let's just take it outside, okay? We don't want to get the hands dirty. Just pick up the bag and put it, put it, put it, put it in the trash. And so during this session of removing the past pain, let's just take any energy that still feels a little painful. Let's go ahead and remove it onto its next evolutionary experience. So I might kind of just pluck away little memories that no longer serve you. You don't need them anymore. Or just soothe over with calming thoughts. Things that Start. 
using those past pains to fuel it, just allowing the energy, all you're doing is releasing energy and it's just being changed, the frequency is just being amplified so that it can actually propel you forward. So as you are removing that past pain, what you can do is just allow your chakras to be open, allow your energy to be calm and just release, let it go and instead what you're going to be doing is just sending that energy forward into the direction of your goals and dreams. So here it is. You're just this self-generating machine, this self-generating energy that's happening. So just opening you up, allowing you to be receptive, opening you up, allowing you to be receptive, opening you up and allowing you to be receptive, opening you up and allowing you to be receptive, opening you up and allowing you to be receptive.
connection with universe source god or whatever it is a person calls it you know it's your business of how you define this energy that is around us and in healing that experience i realized that a lot of people want to move on a lot of people want to be in this connectedness a lot of people want to go on this journey but they don't feel safe to do so Biggest 
yourselves or others um, during this time. Saturn is all about those hard lessons. It represents, honestly, to true form 
December 2020 and will go all the way till March 2023. And so with that happening, we are in the chunk in the middle of that Saturn Aquarius in Aquarius energy is everything that has to do with the future shock and all the revolution it takes on those Uranus qualities as well. And so the life lessons you are learning is difficult because it's actually the hard things you have to go through in order to get to the future you want. You know, the future is the future. It is not set in stone. It is not made up. It is purely in the mind right now. So to actually bring that energy in and start to create a network or foundations in which supports that future, it takes a lot of work. It's like you have to form something out of nothing that you had before. And Aquarian energy is different than uh, Capricorn energy. Capricorn is a stack. It's a period, a, a pyramid. Aquarius energy is like a, a network, uh, wide and expansive. So you will learn more. Or you get um, information from these lessons and support from this social network, this connectedness. You might, I mean, honestly, this is really the time period in which a lot of people uh, are talking about systemic things, social justice, um, Aquarius is the sign of the humanitarian because they cannot see themselves without seeing the impact of the larger, you know, picture, the larger network of people because Aquarians are the friends, you know, they are the the, the friends who uh, support everyone and, and want to be in connectedness and all those things. Now with Saturn in Aquarius, in retrograde, this is all about that internal development. How can you person you need to be for the future that you want to have and that means you gotta let some stuff go maybe some old stuff when saturn was in capricorn that you just need to let go saturn and capricorn ma made you want to do things in a traditional way but saturn and aquarius makes you want to do things in an, in a, um, um, a non-traditional way in a, um, a new and exciting and fresh you know way So, as we talked about yesterday in Jupiter, needing to understand how it impacts you as an individual. So, what is your Saturn in? I personally am going through a Saturn return, and it is true. It is very true to its reputation. <laughs> Y'all, I'll be trying to get these videos out, but sometimes I'll be like, fuck all this. <laughs> Fuck all this shit. <laughs> I'm not doing a motherfucking thing today. Um, but it is true to its uh, nature and to its reputation. So what is your Saturn in? Because that really dictates what you may struggle with. But at the same time, what is your strength? Because think about it. If you struggle with, um, if your Saturn isn't cancer, so you had a difficult, maybe a, a tough lessons with a mother figure, mother energy that also gives you the opportunity to be the best mother in the world because you know what it feels like to not have that. If you struggle with, um, like, uh, uh, I'll even give you Saturn and Aquarius, which is, you know, your, your social networks, um, uh, putting yourself in front, expanding and things like that to know like when you can actually bridge those gaps and expand and be you know living in the future in the way that you want to then like everything just goes and flows with you like it is okay to live and learn those lessons at the same time now the ultimate cheat code is if you know your house which is your the time that you were born if you can see the house that saturn is transiting in baby that narrows it down a lot because it may not be 
just happening energetically like you know you're in the water you're trying to tread water and you're like oh you're trying to stay you're trying to stay up you're trying to stay up um but at the end of the day you could just roll on over to your back and float <laughs> like literally if you're in the middle of water and you and you can't get out you want to conserve energy so just float don't you know because you want to just float float on your back it's probably the best best thing for you to do in the moment and there's a sense of freedom in that a sense of freedom of saying you know what i'm gonna take the self-care i need i'm gonna take the rest that i need i'm gonna take um these moments for myself and i hope you all enjoy my nails they are um jade and amethyst nails for you all mama is back in the game with these nails baby i cannot wait until like december when they're really long my uh, tangent so the longest i feel like my nails were was like maybe 2019 like the the um the uh winter 2019 they were really long i look at those videos i was like that should look good <laughs> so good but then like everyday activities were tough like the, the thing i struggled with the most but i learned a hack for was like when i try to put my credit card to pay for parking i can't because the nails like baby i'm telling you i'll be having to ask strangers to run my car for me you know like but that's it everything else is easy like even typing like when i took my nails off and i was typing i was just like i can't tell the difference you get so used to it like not having nails made me feel like it just made me feel like uh because there are things that i do with my nails that i didn't realize like when i'm cooking i'll pick things up with my nails and i won't be able to feel it baby i try to pick some shit up when i was cooking and I had my nails i was like oh my gosh what am i doing <laughs> but yes you know try your wisdom leaders or their thought leaders or think about things you know or just explore and take what you need and leave what you don't a lot of times people are in this space and they give great advice and then they say some weird ass shit where you're like what are you talking about and sometimes it was just meant to take a little bit and continue to move on because you have to be the one who gives yourself the best advice you have to be the one who shows up for you you have to be the one who communicates the information to yourself in the best way that you need to communicate the information to yourself, if that makes sense. So let's just go on in this. So, long story short, <laughs> to give you the dates, um, you know that uh, Saturn is in Aquarius, December 17, 2020 to March 2023. Don't worry about that, it's just in the, inf in the energy. Bounced back a little bit into Capricorn, don't worry about that right now, just know it's in Aquarius. It is retrograde.
in it. 
you spin. 
Sometimes you gotta 